Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jake, and I'm pleased to be your host for today's Get to Know RTA Media Production and Sport Media session as part of Ryerson's virtual open house, which is taking place from November 9th to 13th and 16th to 20th. There are many sessions taking place across these two weeks, and we encourage you to visit our website and register for any other sessions that might interest you. To start, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the land on which Ryerson stands. Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. Now, this is a land acknowledgement that we lit, that we read at the beginning of important on-campus events and meetings. And even though we're not currently on campus at Ryerson, uh, we still feel it important to acknowledge the history of this land as part as one small part of our commitment to reconciliation. Ryerson has shifted to an essential services model to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. We put together a series of virtual sessions in order to share information and connect with you. Ryerson's working diligently to provide students with fulsome experiences while maintaining the health and safety of our community. A few Zoom housekeeping tips before we get started. We encourage you to ask questions. We have many faculty and staff members here to answer your questions. To do so, use the Q&A pod at the bottom of your Zoom window. Click the Q&A pod to open up, open up a dialogue window and type your questions throughout the presentation. If you're having any audio or video issues, feel free to flag it in the Q&A pod and one of our staff members will assist you. You may rearrange the screen in any way that works best for you and note that rearranging your screen does not impact the way that others are viewing this presentation. This presentation will also be presented with closed captioning to ensure accessibility. If you require closed captioning, please select that option at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Also note that the recordings of this virtual open house session will be available on our website later on. Uh, we would love to know who's joining us today. So before we start, I'm just going to launch a poll, which will indicate uh, whether you are a student who's uh, thinking about coming for fall 2021 or maybe some other time in the future, um, or if you're maybe a parent of a student. So thanks for that. Those, those uh, answers are flowing in. That's fantastic. Um, and without any further ado, I would now like to introduce Erin from the RTA School of Media to start the presentation. Erin, take it away. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, my name is Erin Kerr. I'm the Communications and Events Coordinator for the RTA School of Media. Um, I'm here just to get things kicked off and to um, provide a few introductions today. Uh, you're gonna hear from Sean Haswell and Donna Morrison in a few moments, but I'm also going to go ahead, they're giving a little wave there. Um, I'm gonna take this moment to uh, invite Finley Braithwaite, who is the Program Coordinator for the Media Production Program to just say a hello and a few words. Hello, everybody. I'm Finley Braithwaite, the Program Coordinator for Media Production at the RTA School of Media here at Ryerson. I'm ex so excited to see so many people here today. Thank you for your interest in media production at the RTA School of Media. I hope you're inspired by what you see today, and I look forward to seeing your applications in the near future. RTA is a really exciting place to be with world-class facilities, leading-edge professors, and most importantly, a highly creative, collaborative, and energetic student body driven to succeed. Our alumni are leaders in the field and our current students are not far behind. Beyond our traditional disciplines of radio and television, we're constantly evolving and expanding, pushing the boundaries on emerging digital and interactive platforms for the next generation of storytelling. We're constantly innovating. And as an example, we're implementing an exciting new concentration in video game design. In your first year of our program, find your media production passion. Develop that passion over the next two years, culminating in a major media production practicum project in your final year. From humble beginnings to industry ready, we're excited to connect with you uh, for this journey. Let's play, make, and think together. Great Thank to see so everybody. Much. Thanks, Finley. Um, I'm also just gonna go ahead and uh, pass things over to Joe Recupero, who is the program director of our sport media program. Joe, if you wanna say a few words to our prospective students. Um, do you hear me, Aaron? Everybody? Okay, great. Um, I just want to welcome everyone. Um, again, like Aaron said, my name is Joe Recupero. I'm the program director of Sport Media here. But the first and most important thing I always like to tell um, prospective students and our first years when they come in is that I'm a graduate of RTA myself. Many, many years ago, um, I went on tours like this. Or they weren't like this. They weren't virtual. I actually did go to campus, but um, I, you know, was an RTA student before there was a sport media program. And um, the RTA was the best years of my life. I really, really loved it. And most importantly, I wouldn't have had the opportunities and career that I've had 
if I hadn't gone to RTA. Right out of school, um, after wow. I graduated, I got a job at CBC Television and I first worked in news. And then I went into the wow. sports department where I worked for about 20 years. And in those years, I'm, I worked on 13 Olympic Games just to you know, put that at the top and then world championships and um, world cups all over the world. Um, and I really did get the best seat in the house to see sports at their very, very best. Um, if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get out of the sport media program because we're a fairly new program. We're only in the seventh year right now, but um, our graduates already are working at CBC, TSN, Sportsnet, Yahoo Sports, um, MLSE. They're all over the place. And the best of all is that when you do come here, all your faculty and teachers in the sport media program are currently working at all those places at CBC, TSN, Sportsnet, Yahoo, um, MLSE. And so our currency and connection to the industry is bar none, is absolutely the best there can be. And um, I hope to see um, applications from you all and maybe see you all at uh, orientation next year. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Um, next up, I'm just going to introduce you to Donna Morrison, who is one of our incredible academic advisors here at RTA. She takes great care of all of our students. You will see her a lot when you're here as one of our students. Donna, if you just want to say a word or two. Certainly. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. And I'm so glad you're able to join us. I am Donna Morrison, as Aaron introduced. Um, I'm the lead academic and outreach coordinator for the School of RTA. So whether you are a sport media student, a new media student, or a media production student throughout your curriculum journey, you're going to get to know me very well. Thank you, Donna. Uh, and last but certainly not least, I'm going to introduce you to Sean Haswell. Uh, Sean is the manager of operations and administration here in RTA, which is a very fancy way of saying that uh, Sean keeps the show on the road. Uh, he has a very long history in RTA, and he's going to take you through the rest of our presentation today. Sean. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, and hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I'm uh, delighted to see um, the uh, large number of people who have made it to the presentation today. That's awesome. Uh, I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, Donna and I, we've been doing the, these sorts of things for uh, years and years together. Uh, and we're used to big auditoriums with very large crowds. Um, and so this is like a completely different uh, uh, approach to the whole thing. Uh, so I, I'm at least happy to see a high number if I can't see a, a large number of faces. So uh, thanks so much for being here. Uh, so as Aaron uh, pointed out, uh, we're going to go through uh, a bit about the program. Uh, Donna and I are going to be uh, taking turns kind of uh, walking through each slide. So the things uh, that you need to, uh, the, the reason why you're here is, of course, to learn more about sport media and media production. Uh, what I'm going to start with, though, uh, is talking about, uh, oh, I've jumped a slide. There we go. Uh, are the uh, undergraduate programs that we have here in RTA. Uh, so there are actually three. There's uh, another session that just ended that was all about our uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts in New Media. Uh, so if that is something that is of interest to you, highly encourage you, please uh, do, uh, do check out more information about that. Uh, it's a really exciting uh, program. Uh, we, of course, have our uh, media production program. Joe mentioned how uh, media production has been around for, uh, sorry, how sport media has been around for seven years. Media production has been around for about 70 uh, so we've been at this for a long time. We're, we're, we're one of the first programs that Ryerson ever had uh, when it first opened up uh, a gazillion years ago. Uh, no, I have not been here the entire time, though sometimes it feels like it. Um, uh, the media production program is what used to be called Radio and Television Arts. We changed the name years and years ago because really radio and television, we've been doing so much more than that for such a long time. And so if you're interested in a bunch of different platforms, video, uh, uh, radio, uh, maybe podcasting, uh, virtual reality, video games, uh, like you, you name it. Uh, the media production program is about the whole gamut. That's what it's all about. And then, of course, we have our sport media program, which we created seven years ago because we noticed when looking back at our alumni list that we had a fair number of people who had gone on to great success in the sport media field. And because sport media is kind of its own niche product, we thought, why not have a niche program that would allow students who are particularly keen in that space to be able to come, learn the lessons of, of media production, but apply them to the sport world specifically. 
And so that's what this is, uh, that program is all about. Yeah, you need to have a passion about sports. That makes sense. But you also have to have a passion about uh, media and, and being able to tell stories. Our programs, media production and sport media, are about engaging audiences across platforms. That's what it's, that's what it's all about. And so we're going to show you how to do that. You'll know how and why uh, to choose a specific platform to connect with a specific audience. That's, that's one of the focuses of our program. In media production specifically, we have um, uh, what they call concentrations. So if you want to, you can choose to uh, pursue any of these sort of um, uh, specific areas of interest, and you have to complete a certain number of courses in those things. For years and years now, we've had the, the, top, uh, the top portion of the list, critical media theory, for those of you who are hoping to pursue uh, uh, future academics. Um, digital media, which is how we've sort of encapsulated things like uh, graphic design, um, uh, motion graphics, those sorts of things uh, we, we put under the, 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 the caveat of digital media. Media business. So if you're interested in the business side uh, of media, um, that, that's a concentration that we offer as well. Uh, we have a concentration in radio, sound, podcasting, you, you name it. If it's uh, something that's going into your ears, uh, we, we uh, will cover it in our classes music production to some extent too. Screenwriting, of course, um, uh, social media, and then television and video, which tends to be one of the more popular ones that we offer. Uh, and as uh, Finley pointed out at the beginning of the presentation, we're very excited because uh, as of next year, we will be offering a, a brand new concentration in video game design. Uh, we have a professor of video games uh, uh, who just started with us uh, uh, last year. And uh, uh, his name is Dr. Chris Alexander, uh, one of the few in uh, uh, in in the uh, uh, in in Canada, at least. Um, and and we're uh, fortunate enough to to have him here with us at the RTA School of Media. And so uh, we we saw that there's an opportunity there for uh, uh, some growth as well. Uh, I can see a question just popped up, which I will address just because it uh, is pertinent to this conversation about uh, concentrations. Are there limited spots? Uh, in these concentrations? The answer is no, there aren't at all. Uh, you can claim, uh, it's not like a minor, you don't have to kind of declare it. Uh, you can you can declare it if you want to at the beginning of your, of your degree, uh, but you can also uh, apply to have a concentration at the end. You could kind of do an accounting of all of the courses that you've done and go, oh, it ends up I've actually completed a concentration. I didn't even realize that I did. Or you can obviously uh, purposefully pursue one uh, the entire time. So they are deliberately open-ended. Dawn is going to talk to you a little bit about how our degree works. Absolutely. So for both sport media and for media production, we are looking at a four-year degree. It is a Bachelor of Arts. Um, the programs are very similar in nature as far as the content that you are going to be learning throughout those four years. Your first year is your foundation year, and you come in with very much a prescribed timetable, meaning that you don't get a lot of choice as to the courses that you're going to be taking because we need to give you that foundation first. So the only option that you will have will be a liberal study course that you will take, um, which is outside of your main focus in your degree. That gives you a chance to broaden your horizons and breadth and depth of knowledge in other areas in courses such as language courses, philosophy, sociology, those types of things. But for the main part, in your fall and your winter of first year, you'll be covering courses in audio and digital media, creative processes. You'll be covering courses in the area of single and um, multi-camera production, media history, media theory, all of those things in media writing, culminating together to give you your foundation before you head into your second year, which is your intermediate year. Once you do get into second year, this is where you're going to find flexibility starting. You no longer have a prescribed timetable, although you will have some courses that you will be required to take in each of your semesters. But here, this is where the gates open up and you get a chance to be picking courses that may be of more interest to you and now deciding where is it you see yourself wanting to go. If you're a student that wants to specialize in a particular area, now is where you start choosing those courses moving forward. As you head into your third year, that's where you're going to do more advanced courses, building upon what you've had in your two previous years, and also planning towards your final year, project development and thinking, what is going to be that major pro project in the end, practicum or thesis production that you'll be following, and heading then on to do internships that are strategically placed in your fourth year, with the potential of hopefully being hired from an internship that you may be completing in your final semester of fourth year.
Great, thanks, Donna. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, our facilities, um, as Finley mentioned off the top. Uh, they, they're pretty incredible. Um, uh, we, we uh, as I said, we've been at this for, for quite a long time. Uh, years and years ago, Ryerson um, uh, sort of made a brand new building, which is kind of the main home uh, for RTA School of Media called the Rogers Communication Center. And uh, that building houses the majority of what we do. And it was kind of purpose built for our communications related programs. And so uh, in there, we have um, large uh, uh, sound stages, uh, TV studios. Uh, we have uh, radio facilities. Uh, we have audio recording facilities. We have uh, large computer labs, uh, uh, both Mac uh, and Alienware PCs uh, for uh, video game design, for uh, uh, experimenting with virtual environments, and for um, uh, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality applications. So uh, all of these facilities are available to us uh, through the Rogers Communication Center. One of the uh, most exciting uh, and, and most recently built facilities uh, is this first one in the list here called the Allen Slate Radio Institute. Um, uh, the Slate family, for those who may not know, uh, they are a um, uh, they're, they're a kind of foundational um, uh, uh, media family uh, here in Canada. Um, they ended up uh, uh, having a series of businesses uh, that expanded to be an enormous media empire uh, here in Canada. Uh, and uh, several years ago, uh, they sold their business to uh, one of the big uh, companies now, Chorus. Uh, and they, I think they sold it for uh, approaching $4 billion. Yeah, that was with a B. Um, and so uh, uh, what's been amazing about uh, the Slate family um, is, is that they've been very generous with their uh, with the money that they made. Um, and so uh, they, they donated some money to Ryerson and they allowed us to basically um, completely rebuild our radio facilities. And we did that about five years ago. Uh, and what that's done is it's allowed us to have a, a state of the art facility. Uh, we went out to uh, broadcasters and we looked at what they're doing today uh, and we made sure that our brand brand new facility um, looks as much and acts as much like a professional facility as possible. Uh, it's, it's a radio station first and classroom second, uh, uh, as opposed to what we kind of had previously, which was classroom first, radio facility second. So uh, it, it's very, very exciting. Uh, five different control rooms. Uh, uh, so we can have five different uh, 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 pieces of radio going on uh, at the same time, or uh, they can all work together to do something very, very big and elaborate. Uh, um, and uh, what's been wonderful is that because we're doing it the way the professionals uh, out there in the industry are doing it, uh, we were very able to quickly pivot just like uh, the industry was to be able to offer uh, access to these facilities remotely. So uh, our students are still learning how to use the radio equipment, but they're doing it from home. They're just uh, joining remotely from their home, uh, linking up with the systems that we have here on campus and learning how to use that system. So no, it's true. We're not on campus right now. They're not able to kind of touch the, the buttons on the actual physical machine, but they are using that machine, uh, which means that uh, when they come back, uh, we're thinking that the uh, transition will be a, a piece of cake because it won't be the first time that they've used it. So the Outslate Radio Institute is uh, is a very exciting thing for us. And it's something uh, because we hear this all the time. Uh, I, I haven't seen this question pop up yet, but it happens all the time. Uh, uh, people hear that when you come to Ryerson, it's a university. So it's all theoretical. And that's true. Theory is a really, really critically important thing to what we do. Um, uh, but the suggestion that the colleges might make is that we don't let you touch stuff. It's ridiculous. It's not true. Uh, uh, you, you'll be in the Allen Slate Radio Institute producing radio in the first month of your classes. Uh, uh, you have the opportunity to have your own radio show within the first three weeks of the course, uh, or of, the, of the program, I should say. You could just apply and we'll give you the keys to the radio station and off you go. You've got your time slot and you're broadcasting out to the world. So um, uh, yeah, we are, we are hands-on. We're not only hands-on, uh, uh, but we are hands-on. The Transmedia Zone is another facility that we have access to. It's actually part of uh, uh, something that our, our, our main faculty, which is the Faculty of Communication and Design. Uh, the Transmedia Zone is part of a, a, an environment called the Creative Innovation Studio. And the uh, uh, Transmedia Zone allows uh, students to be able to uh, take projects that maybe they built in class, maybe they didn't, uh, and it allows them to uh, work with professionals and, and collaborators in order to kind of um, 
incubate their idea, see if they can turn it into a business. Does it, does it have uh, an opportunity to grow? And there's a way to do this through the transmedia zone. Uh, the zone learning is an important part of what Ryerson, uh, what Ryerson's ecosystem looks like uh, as it relates to education. Uh, and it's, a, it's an exciting opportunity to be able to uh, turn these things into uh, per perhaps marketable um, uh, uh, products or services. Transmedia Zone. The Global Campus Studio is actually connected to the Allen Slate Radio Institute. We knew um, that radio uh, uh, is not dying. People are still listening to it with the same uh, uh, levels of listenership as they always did. Um, but video is a, a critical component to uh, radio today. You can tune into radio stations and see them on their YouTube channels and see what they're actually doing. We have the same capacity in all of our radio facilities, but we also have the Global Campus Studio, which is connected. This Global Campus Studio allows us to connect with international partners the world over to do co-productions. And that could be in audio, it could be in video, it could be in whatever. Uh, we've partnered with schools all over the world uh, on every continent, I think, uh, except for Antarctica. Uh, uh, and, uh, and it's been a wonderful opportunity for students to actually have an international experience without even needing to leave uh, uh, the city, or at least in this year, even the comfort of their own home. Uh, uh, we wanted to provide those international opportunities because they're important and the Global Campus Studio allows us to do that. We have an equipment distribution center. We, we call it the EDC. Uh, some people call it the cage. That has a disturbing meaning for me, so I don't call it that. Uh, 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 but you can go and we have um, literally millions of dollars worth of equipment uh, that you get to come in and you get to take uh, uh, from you know low-end cameras to high-end cameras to microphones, you, you, you name it. If it's a tool that you require for production outside uh, of the uh, building that we operate out of, then you can take that equipment out with you so long as you're in a class. I want to be clear because that's a question that'll come up later. Can I just take stuff? Yes, but only if it's class related. You can't take it uh, just for, for fun. We're, we're, not, uh, we're not a rental house. We're not trying to fund your future business. Um, uh, so so uh, the Equipment Distribution Center is a crucial uh, hub of activity uh, in the uh, radio, uh, sorry, in the Rogers Communication Center. The RTA Sportsnet Production Center, that's kind of the home for our sport media program. So uh, you may have heard of a, a building, if you're of a certain vintage anyway, uh, uh, guilty. Uh, uh, you may have heard of the uh, Maple Leaf Gardens. Maple Leaf Gardens. Uh, well, Maple Leaf Gardens uh, is now actually uh, uh, half owned by Ryerson University. We don't call it Maple Leaf Gardens anymore because the people at Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment said we couldn't. So we, uh, we actually call it uh, the Mattamy Athletic Center. And the MAC, that's how we affectionately refer to it, uh, is the home base for our sport media program. The sport media folks, um, uh, they hang out in this place called the RTA Sportsnet Production Center, and it is a control room, it's a live shoot space, it's a classroom, it's got an audio facility, it's got editing facilities, and we uh, use that facility uh, uh, almost 24 hours a day. That's how it feels. Uh, so it's used for classes. You're in there again right away in your first year. Uh, and we also cover, and this is a very exciting thing, um, all of the um, varsity athletics games that happen out of the Madame Athletic Center. So all the hockey, all the basketball, and all the volleyball, uh, it's RTA students, whether they're in sport media, media production, or even new media, it's, it's totally uh, an open opportunity. Uh, but students have the ability to come in and, uh, and, and work on those varsity athletics games. And that's possible because of the RTA Sportsnet Production Center up there. It's actually a virtual tour on the Ryerson website. And so if you have a chance, go and check it out. It's, uh, it's, it's an impressive space. Uh, and then I've mentioned the production studios already in the RCC, so we can move on from there. Dawn is going to share with you a little bit about the opportunities that we have available at Ryerson. Indeed. So we've got a number of opportunities for students to get involved in. Um, international intensives are relatively new and they are wonderful because they give students opportunities to study abroad for shorter periods of time as opposed to something like an exchange. If you were to go on an exchange, you would be gone for a full semester at one of any of 18 of the different partners that we have. Um, and that's typically done in third year. But if you're a student that doesn't really wanna spend that much time away on an, uh, on an intensive experience, then you could perhaps look at something that is shorter in duration where you might be away three weeks, six weeks, eight weeks studying somewhere like Belgium or Italy. It's a great opportunity for you to gain experience and to also earn a credit towards your degree requirements. 
RTA in LA, for instance, is a course where we are partnered with UCLA. Students get a chance to um, participate in this course. They have to apply for it because it is competitive. They are enrolled in the course uh, through the spring and summer semester. They are doing a little bit of work ahead of time, but they will be traveling to LA and there they are pitching an idea. Um, it's a chance to build upon the ideas that they have developed here at Ryerson and taking them abroad to work with producers and television uh, industry that uh, many of whom are RTA grads. So we're very proud about this and it's also a chance to earn a credit. So it's not only fun, but it's an exciting way to, to build upon your degree. There are RTA leadership panels that we house, uh, bringing in members from the industry where you have workshops that you can attend and learn from the best of the best within the industry. Internships are something that we mentioned briefly in your four-year curriculum where they are required in your fourth year in your winter semester, but you do have the ability to intern or do co-ops as many students refer to them as, it, right from your beginning, from the first year all the way to fourth year. There are a chance to do internships that are less rigorous where they don't require as many hours as you would in your fourth year. And those can be done in first, second or third year and counted towards a degree credit as well. Or they can be done strictly for the experiential aspect uh, if you manage to find something that is a paid opportunity. Um, and I mean, just it's a good way to build upon. As an example, I remember doing one that I had done in first year and it was a chance to do voiceover work for a Korean radio station. And I did it outside of class time. It was a paid gig. So while it wasn't a degree credit for me, it was building upon my experience and my resume and earning extra money as well. Rams Live is something that we host uh, through the Mattamy, which Sean just briefly spoke about. Students have the chance to be involved with filming uh, productions that are done there, typically uh, anything ranging from hockey to basketball to volleyball, you name it. But it's a chance for students to get involved and uh, learn how it is to actually film a live event. RTA Productions is something that we have done for many years where we get involved and have done uh, videos, for instance, for uh, community members, uh, perhaps doing a video that would be used by St. Michael's Hospital to help build awareness about a particular issue. Students often have done these where they've had a chance to build upon their skills and be paid for those skills. And it's something that they would um, apply to do. Scholarships, that's something that's very big and happening right now within RTA and we are just finishing those all off. But we have over 40 partners, uh, sorry, 40 different scholarships right now that are available to our students and those continue to increase every year from the time that you are entrance uh, level right through to being graduated from the program, you will have the ability to apply for a number of very um, lucrative scholarships and ones that uh, can lead to opportunities, lead to in internships, um, lead to building experience in various areas of interest and, and just helping to add to the financial side of uh, your studies while you're here in RTA. Spirit Live, we spoke briefly about that. Uh, you have a chance where you can apply um, when you come into the program to have your own host your own radio show. Um, and if, if it's something that's of interest, then you'll strongly be encouraged to do so. And for now, I'll hand it back to you, Sean. Great. Um, so, uh, so some people ask, so I, I, we, we're just going to get it out of the way. Uh, 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 what, what kind of jobs can I do if I'm uh, taking a media production degree or if I'm coming in and, uh, and doing something in sport media? And the answer, uh, honestly, uh, this is not uh, at all in any way um, a comprehensive list. Uh, this is literally just something I, I kind of just threw at the wall uh, one day uh, uh, based on uh, just things that I know about the industry. Um, there are so, so many other jobs and job types than what you're seeing here. Um, this is just meant to give you a sense of uh, some of the uh, uh, spaces that um, uh, that one might work in when they uh, complete a degree here with us. If you kind of consider it this way, uh, uh, th these degrees are kind of, they're communications degrees, right? You're, you're learning how to talk to audiences. You're learning uh, how you would communicate with a group of people, why you would choose a specific platform to communicate with them. And when you kind of consider it that way, Everybody needs to communicate. Um, and so these, these skills are marketable beyond even just working in media. Um, uh, we, we've had people go on to work at like Canadian Tire, uh, Loblaws, like, like places that 
uh, on the surface kind of have nothing to do with media, but they, they, they're taking their communications uh, lessons and, and their skills and they're applying them to uh, uh, businesses uh, or other opportunities that uh, may not be immediately apparent. And so uh, I'm not going to go over any of these. I'm just kind of, uh, it's like spaghetti at a wall. Um, uh, are, are there jobs? The answer is yes. Um, uh, the, the, the biggest limiting factor, quite honestly, um, is, is not lack of opportunity. It's, it's what is it you want to do? And are you putting the time and effort and demonstrating the passion to, uh, uh, to, to show that this is where you're gonna go. Uh, in, in my experience, I, I've been with RTA for uh, uh, in, in uh, various management roles for about 10 years now. Um, and in, in my experience, admittedly, this is anecdotal, not research oriented. Those people who are passionate and really keen, they find success. Like this is not, um, uh, it, it, it's not a, um, a matter of like, you know, fight to the death for the few jobs that are, are remaining. It's like, no, no, th these people go on to find uh, d decent careers. Uh, it, it's the people who maybe aren't sure that this is for them. Uh, th those are the people that, you know, we, we don't always know where, where they end up or how things go uh, with them necessarily. Um, but uh, again, the question is, are there jobs? Yes, many. This is just a small, small sample. Uh, a, a fun fact, just before we move on uh, about jobs, Yesterday, uh, uh, at a staff meeting, we were talking about, I don't know if anyone's seen the show on Netflix, Hip Hop Revolution. Uh, great show, if you haven't watched it, uh, hosted by Shad. Um, brilliant, brilliant show. And I was like, I bet you some RTA people have worked on that. I don't know who, but I bet you they have. And so I, I spent about like 15 minutes just kind of uh, comparing the credits for that show uh, uh, to our alumni list. And within 15 minutes, I'd already found about 10 names of RTA people who were working on that show. Uh, and some of them uh, graduated you know, back in 94. Uh, and some of them graduated as recently as 2014. It's a really, uh, it's a really um, uh, a wide range of opportunities. So we're out there. We've been at this for a long time. Uh, and and uh, uh, yes, there are definitely jobs. Uh, Donna, maybe do you want to uh, share a little bit about the um, admission requirements? Certainly. So um, there is a little bit of difference between the two programs. With sport media, it is a grades only program. So you're going to want to ensure that you are maintaining your strongest grades ever. It's getting more and more uh, competitive to uh, get in with these programs. So you, you wanna keep your grades as high as you can. Um, I would say that currently the students that are in sport media across the board probably have an average of 80 and above overall average as well as in English. Even though it may say that you need to have a minimum of a 70, I'd certainly be targeting for much higher. With media production, it's a grades plus program. So while we're taking a look at your grades being an important factor, and again, trying to maintain that high standard and trying to earn as high a grade as you can in English, um, there's a non-academic component to that, whereby you're going to be required to write two short essays, and there are questions that are provided for you, and they're pretty straightforward. There are questions about you, so the best person to answer those are you. Um, there is also a resume, and there are three reference letters as well that you'll need to provide. And all of that is put together to create a package that makes it viable for you to hopefully be granted an interview. Um, and that interview is important because without an interview, you can't get admitted into the media production program. So there's a few more steps that you might have to take when applying to media production than sport media. What I do like to recommend to students, if you do have an interest in sports, don't limit yourself just to applying to sport media. I would apply to both because the two course programs do a lot of cross pollination. A lot of sport media students take media production courses as, and vice versa for media production students. So the worst thing that could happen is you get accepted to both programs and then you've got a decision to make. Do I accept media production or do I accept sport media? But I will say that those that may have applied to both didn't get into sport media and really want to work in sports, but did get accepted to media production they stand equally a strong chance of being able to work in that industry because the skill sets that you are going to acquire, the projects that you are going to be completing are all very much similar to the sport media program. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's worth noting um, that uh, um, we mentioned Rams Live and the coverage of all of those games. Um, that, as I mentioned previously, it's open to everybody. 
Um, and, and so if you, if you have an interest in that space, um, then you should go and, and do that. Uh, and you can say that you graduated from uh, Ryerson uh, uh, with a media production degree, having done whatever, dozens of, uh, of live sporting events uh, before you even left our halls. Uh, uh, that, you know, uh, absolutely, uh, there's uh, the opportunity there. No question about it. The other thing I would add, Sean, about the six, 12 grade, uh, six grade 12 credits that are required, one, as I noted, is English for both of them. And then the other five, they're your best five. So they don't have to include science or math. If those are not your strong courses, don't worry about it. It's your top five on top of your English. Great. So here's the timeline. Do you want to maybe go over it, Donna? Yes. So applications, you should be thinking already ahead of time now and preparing your applications. They do not uh, get viewed until after the new year. So students start submitting their applications in January with a deadline for both sport media and media production being February 1st. That's meaning that's where equal consideration is given across the board, provided your application has been received before, on or before February 1st, then you're on a level playing field with everybody else that has applied. From February to March, this is where, if you've applied to the Grades Plus program, media production, this is where we would be conducting interviews. And they can start early in March, all the way to the end, uh, sorry, early February, all the way to the end of March. Um, and we don't start sending offers typically for media production until after those interviews have finished later in March, uh, right up through to the month of July, sometimes even early August. Um, for sport media, I do know that because it is a grades only program, often you can have early acceptances with those. So you may hear back sooner th rather than later about being uh, provided an offer of admission. Whereas with media production, it will take long before the uh, interviews have happened and then offers start rolling out after those interviews. Um, and you could receive an offer of admission, you could receive a decline, or you could be placed on a wait list. And the one thing I would say about being on a wait list is not to give up hope. Many, many of our students that are currently in the program have been selected from the wait list. And that's because when we send an offer out, it doesn't necessarily mean that a student's going to accept that. Maybe we weren't their first choice, or maybe they accepted another offer from another university or another program. And if they've declined our offer, that's when we go to the wait list and start choosing from there. So please do not give up hope. We often have chose from the wait list later on in through the summer months even. Yeah, uh, uh, Donna, Donna said it. And, and, and I always say um, that what you're shooting, what, what, you, what you're trying to get is not a no. <laughs> if you if you get a wait list or you get a yes, that's good. That's great. You you've you've made it through uh, uh, the tough bit for sure. Uh, okay, and I think that's the end of the kind of formal uh, presentation. And so uh, we can move into questions. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, uh, Jake might be rejoining us. He reappeared magically from the background. You've summoned me. Hello, <laughs> I'm back. Um, yeah, so we got quite a few questions to go through, so I'm just going to kind of go from the top. Um, so one person's asking, is media production offered as a minor? No. Nope. No minors. Nope. Nope. <laughs> there, All right, that's that was it. a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. Um, next question is, does every student get placed into an internship? How are internships acquired and how are students placed? So internships are funny because you can find them on your own or when you're in your final fourth year, you can be provided with an internship from a list that is kept aside strictly for those fourth year students. We have multiple partners within the industry so that it's very rare where I have a fourth year student who cannot find an internship towards their final degree credit. But throughout your first, second, third year of the program, you're going to receive notifications from an RTA email address known as RTA Jobs and Opportunities, whereby internships become available to students and they can view them and decide whether or not it's something they can do alongside their curriculum that they're carrying. Is it something that is possible or not? Um, and again, if you find an internship that you like to do, then it's a matter of consulting with me first so we can find out whether or not you can actually do it for degree credit. Um, uh, just building off of what Donna said, um, uh, literally, we we go most years by having uh, many internship 
opportunities that go unfilled. Like that's how many we have. It's actually one of the things I really like about our, our students because they, they have so much initiative and they have so much drive that they often find their own. So then this list that we've curated over the last 70 years kind of goes unfilled because they're like, no, no, I've got my thing. This is what I want to do. And, and please help me uh, make this a reality, which we do. Incredible, great, thanks, thanks for that answer. Um, someone said, I'm interested in filmmaking and videography, and I would like to know the biggest differences between image arts, film studies, and RTA media production. Trust me, no, not, not gonna answer that question, but here's what I am gonna do. Um, uh, here's what I am gonna do. Uh, uh, here's what you should do, uh, because this will, I'm serious, this will actually answer your question. I don't need to answer your question. You're gonna answer your own question. You're gonna go to the Ryerson website, uh, uh, or go to Google and type in Ryerson RTA 101. That's what you're going to go. Ryerson RTA 101. Hit enter. It's going to bring you to a page and it's going to uh, let you click on and learn about RTA 101. It's the first class or one of the first classes you're going to take. Why I'm telling you to go to this web page is along the right hand side. There's a huge list of all of the classes that the RTA School of Media offers. That's what I want you to go and look at. And you go and look at that long list of classes that the RTA School of Media offers. And if you look down that list and that list speaks to you, then you know that you've chosen the right thing. Okay, thanks, thanks very much. Um, someone's asked, who are some alumni that have completed the sport media program? Um, now that's a newer program, so maybe also RTA it people is. who are involved in sports. Yeah. So if you're a soccer fan, um, uh, one soccer, uh, if I say one soccer, that should mean something to you. If you're not a soccer fan, I'll just briefly describe. Uh, it, it's a platform that basically has been sucking up all of the rights to almost every soccer league that exists out there. Uh, and, and now you can watch it all through their platform, onesoccer.ca. Um, when they, uh, they're a Spanish company originally, they first moved to Canada. It was their first uh, foray into North America. And they came to us, us, I love it. They come here. They're like, we heard you guys are uh, uh, somebody. And, and so we, we needed to uh, uh, connect with you. Uh, and, and so uh, they, they reached out to us and said, you know, do, do you have anybody who knows soccer uh, that, that's graduated from your program? And we said, yeah. So we, we sent them uh, some tapes of some soccer games that we'd covered years ago. Uh, and now uh, if I say the name Adam Jenkins, Adam Jenkins is one of their lead uh, like hosts uh, and, and on-air talent uh, for, for one soccer. Um, the head of uh, digital content and in-game venue uh, presentation, um, uh, 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 what, what's her name, Donna? I always forget. Uh, this is terrible. Anyway, um, uh, she, she uh, uh, Oh, this is awful that I'm not remembering. Anyway, she 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 graduated. Yeah, she 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 graduated from our program uh, as well, and and so yeah, like she's basically the face of Toronto FC, uh, for for all intents and purposes. Joe's there. Is he, is <laughs> I didn't know who you were struggling for, Maria Papadakis. Yes, thank you. I just couldn't yeah. think of the name. Um, uh, yeah, so Maria Papadakis. Um, uh, Sarah Jenkins is another um, yeah. uh, alumni that I'm thinking about. Um, uh, she went on to work at Yahoo Sports, uh, uh, and I believe now she's been hired at the CBC. Um, I'm thinking yeah. like Stan Temming. I, like there, there are, there are like, the, the thing is, you're, you're asking for notable names, and it's hard. Jesse These Pollack. people are just, sure, Jesse, Jesse Pollock. Pollock yep. Bar Down. Bar Down, yep. Yep. Um, like it, it's hard because uh, a lot of these people you may not necessarily have heard of, but they're already making waves and doing things um, uh, in the industry. And, and we were speaking before about how, you know, you don't have to go through sport media to be successful in sport media. Um, uh, there's a name, uh, uh, Kirtika uh, Utayakumar, um, and she uh, was a media production student with us, but she took advantage of, she took every sport media class that she could. Uh, she went and uh, volunteered with all of those varsity athletics games that I was talking about previously. And I, I think I saw on Twitter the other day that she's worked something like 330 days of the past 365 um, uh, uh, doing um, uh, graphics work um, for uh, uh, major sports broadcasts all over North America. Like she literally doesn't stop working. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's just an example of what we were talking about. Um, there are lots of uh, opportunities out there. It's just a matter of taking them. My mouse is broken. Okay, great. Thanks so much for that one. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go to the next one here. My career goal is to be a sideline reporter or journalist for the Raptors. Would you recommend journalism or sport media? 
I mean, you came to the media production uh, and sport media thing, so we're obviously going to say us. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'll use the same uh, suggestion as previous. Go and look at our list of classes. Go, go and look at the sport media program uh, and look at the courses that are offered there and see if they speak to you. Uh, if they do, then it's clear that that's the, the answer for you. Um, uh, and, and do the same with journalism, by the way. Uh, we, we love our friends in journalism. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the, uh, one of the journalism classes that is part of the RTA degree is actually offered through journalism. So um, we, we, we play nicely in the same sandbox. I would also like to add to that, Sean, I often get a lot of journalism students coming to me after first year saying, I think I've made a mistake because I really want to be involved in more production side of things as well. Um, and while we do work very closely with journalism, um, it's not to say one school is better than another, but for those that really do have a strong interest in the production side of things, you can also pursue a journalism minor. So to me, it makes sense to be involved in RTA and pursue the journalism minor alongside because that's just a little feather in your cap by the time you graduate. Spoken as a true academic advisor. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, someone has asked, would uh, the UCLA program, so I'm, I'm guessing uh, RTA in LA, would that be instead of the internship or could you do both? You have to do both. In fact, uh, it's a summer class. So if you want to do it, it happens in the summer. It's the only time you can do it whereas internship is in the winter of your last year, so. Yeah, it, the RTA in LA is an option. It's a core elective course that you get to do. Internship, there are internships that are available as electives and internships that are required in your fourth year. So you can do both. Great. Uh, I can see Finley flagged a question to answer live. Uh, do students in RTA media production learn about film production? Absolutely. I mean, this is one of our strengths is uh, if you look at a lot of the, the fourth year practicums that you drive towards through your four years of study here, um, we have lots of fantastic examples of really well scripted, uh, produced, executed shot, um, cinematic short films, uh, episodic pilots, um, documentaries. Um, so we have a really kind of wide range of practice. Uh, in terms of, you know, visual shooting, visual composition, visual um, storytelling. So it's, it's definitely uh, one of the things under our umbrella. But as Sean pointed to earlier, media production has quite a wide umbrella, in, you know, encapsulating um, all things sound, visual and interactive. So that is definitely um, where a lot of students kind of gravitate towards naturally because of our shared experience watching high quality uh, films and television shows, it's, it's a very common output of the program. And we've got some really, 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 really nice cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, good to hear. Um, how does sports media help us get into certain prestigious Canadian sports networks such as TSN or Sportsnet? I assume some internships? Jo Joe, do you, wanna, do you wanna run with that? Okay, thanks, Sean. Um, yes, uh, there are internships in fourth year in the last semester uh, that many students do at uh, the sport networks like Sportsnet, TSN, or CBC Sports, or whatever. But generally, what tends to happen is most students in the program are getting into internships after even second year into third year. Um, they usually have started acquiring internships and jobs by the time they actually hit fourth year. And then that internship just kind of segues into a job for them. Um, but yeah, as Sean was mentioning earlier, uh, one of the, you know, just to go to the very first group of students that graduated that have done so well, like Maria Papadakis at uh, Toronto FC, she was doing that when she was even in third year. Sarah Jenkins got a job at Yahoo Sports um, upon graduation and now has segued even over to um, producer of the digital studio at CBC Sports, Stan Temming um, and Sarah and uh, about a dozen other students in the program worked on the, C on, uh, the Rio Olympics after second year in the summer of uh, 2016 and kind of kept up those contacts and kept up the work. And so that's where some of them have ended up as well. Adam Jenkins, as uh, Sean said, yeah, is doing really well with the soccer. Uh, Victor Finley is someone who also has been doing a lot of work with CBC, even now even at uh, CBC News for like a sportscaster for them. Um, and as well was doing uh, TSN, 
sports network, um, a lot of stuff there. So the students, because they are also meeting so many um, uh, people in the industry, either being taught by them in their classes or by the, the roster of people that kind of come in and do guest speaking, um, the currency is, is, uh, is huge. So you're in constant contact with, with the industry. Ailish Forfar, I realized as well. We didn't say that. Yeah, Ailish, should have. right? Yeah. yeah. Just graduated, yeah. There's a there's another one. Um, yep. uh, yeah. And a ton of them are at Bar Down, but you wouldn't necessarily see them. They're working behind the scenes. But Jesse Pollock, if you're following Bar Down, is, is, is kind of a rising star on Bar Down. And he was one of our first grads. And, and, and there have been people, um, uh, by the way, for those who are not necessarily perfectly excited about this idea of the sports industry being um, uh, uh, the, the, the kind of target. Um, uh, you've had some uh, people go through that program, Joe, who've gone on to law school, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, two of the students in the very first year, one of them is at uh, University of Alberta. Um, and uh, another one is at Osgood Law School. And yeah. each year now, we, we've actually gotten at least one student or two in a, going to law school after, after the program. Because there's also an emphasis on the business and theory side um, as well. Like you, you get a, a very good theoretical and critical thinking base. So you're able to use your, your, your Bachelor of Arts in this program and in any program you should. You're able to use as a foundation of springboard into a graduate school, which includes law school, MBA program. One of our students is, is doing the Ted Rogers MBA with a sports stream right now. Um, Jesse Pollock as well actually applied to grad school and um, he, he um, had to make that choice between going to grad school or he was had a full-time job at TSN. And so, I mean, he took the job at TSN, but what, what I always say was with him being in our very first cohort, that's exactly what we hope for is that he had options. That's what you sh should have and what we hope to give you when you come out of here is you have options. You can go to grad school and he had a scholarship offer or you might have a full-time job, your dream job at a network. So, I mean, the best place to be is, is like that and be in Jesse's shoes and have options in life. Awesome, thanks, Joe. Jake? Uh, next one, Finley had flagged as well. Can you explain more about the video game design in media production? Yeah, absolutely. As uh, as Sean highlighted earlier, it's it's driven by Dr. Chris Alexander, and uh, he is you know building a whole concentration um, in in the craft of video game design. Um, it is not a computer science program. It is not uh, that is not what this is. So we take a much more um, uh, approach akin to video game design uh, in terms of creating video game design documents that really drive and define the overall game experience that a production team could take and run with. Just as you'd have a team that scripts and does pre-production for a feature film, just as you'd have um, you know, people involved behind the scenes in terms of all facets of media production. Um, this is the kernel of the idea in terms of the mood, the treatment, the design, the art, uh, the overall aesthetic interactivity and design elements of those games uh, manifested um, in a plan, in a design document that a team could uh, translate into an actual game. Uh, yeah, and sorry, go on. Go ahead, Sean. I was just going to say, like, it, it, it's worth noting uh, that I think uh, when people, uh, some people, uh, uh, think about uh, video games, they think, uh, you know, I'm a programmer and I'm sitting in my basement and I've got this idea and I pro like I code it and I've just made my game. Uh, that's actually really not how video games are are made. To Finley's point, uh, there are like the idea people. A game should do this and it should look like this and it's conceptual. Uh, and then that that document that Finley uh, th or those documents that Finley mentioned, then go to the programmers who then make that vision a reality. So you're not going to be programming. You're, you're we're talking about the ideas. We're, we're producers, we're storytellers. Um, and there's a lot of media production execution uh, that happens at the school. But first and foremost, we are, uh, you know, at the conceptual edge of, of being those storytellers, forming those ideas and, and making them happen. Yeah, engaging those audiences. Uh, I see one that's flagged here. Could you please explain more about music production and audio engineering programs? 
Hey, that's me again. Um, this is my jam. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. My background is in sound production, uh, in feature film, in music production, but also in, in, in the interactive space. Um, so we have a full um, curriculum that will take you from creating podcasts in your first year to exploring dramatic narratives, sound for picture and music production in your second year. And then you can specialize in advanced practices from immersive interactive audio to live audio production um, a traditional soundtrack, sound design and post-production. I'm sure I'm forgetting one. Um, and uh, many, many more uh, options, including technical theory um, that you can fulfill in your time here at Ryerson. Beyond that, though, there's a lot of content driven courses uh, where you can fulfill, um, you know, further podcast creation, live radio creation um, as part of your studies here. So more focused on content, less on the kind of operational practice, um, but still uh, sound related nonetheless. So, yeah, we've got a lot of really Really, really exciting uh, sound opportunities. And it wasn't part of your list, Sean, but we have advanced uh, audio facilities on the third floor. They're fantastic. It's a palace of sound. We have an SSL 900 AWS console, and we have a number of uh, other um, large recording spaces as well um, for you to fulfill your rock and roll, uh, hip hop fantasies, uh, whatever it is you, you've been wanting to do your entire life. That's why I came to the program in the first place. Um, it is here waiting for you. Incredible. Um, next one that's flagged, what is happening with current students since classes are online, not using facilities at this time? Yeah, so Jake, you mentioned it yourself. Um, the the, the uh, whole school has gone into an essential services model. Uh, and what that means for all of us is that uh, largely we're all working from home, which is uh, in part why you're seeing the office that I'm standing in right now that's in my house. Um, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, our students are working from home as well. Uh, and so what we've done is uh, obviously for the classes that are more theoretical, um, uh, they were kind of comparatively easy. Um, uh, they, they moved into either a Zoom space or they're running asynchronously. Uh, uh, I know some people here are familiar, if I say uh, D2L or Brightspace, uh, you, you're probably familiar with that from your, your high school. Uh, so we, we use learning management systems here as well, obviously. Um, but uh, I, I imagine that your question is actually more about how are we doing production still uh, in this context? And the answer is we're doing it the same way that industry is doing it. Uh, Finley looks like he wants to weigh in. So do it. Yeah, just so like as an example, your first class, your first production class would be RTA 104, which is the introductory audio production class, and we make podcasts. And so uh, all the students at home have have obtained a, a low cost USB microphone. Uh, we've been able to secure Pro Tools software for you guys to use at home on your own systems, and we're making podcasts. You know, there's there's some things we can't do in the out of um, you know uh, the remote context, but there's so much we can do. And as Sean pointed to. It's, it's what the industry is doing. So we're doing practices of tape sync where people are interviewing each other, recording locally at their own locations and combining it together to an interview that sounds like they're both there. Like, and this is an industry standard practice that's dated back to you know connecting two radio stations together. There's a lot of remote things that have always happened and we're actually going quite far uh, in those directions. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not all bad news. Um, we are doing some really, really exciting things. And if you are applying for the fall uh, 2021, um, our hope is that we'd all be back on campus together, but we've, we've, we've done first year uh, remotely and we're really, really um, uh, pleased with, with some of the things that we've had, uh, our experiences in that first year. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but we are, um, we are uh, really excited about what um, wins we've had in that column. Yeah, uh, so Finley uh, talked about uh, RTA 104, the, the sound production class, the introduction class. Uh, I, I'll just briefly speak about our video production classes. Um, uh, the way they work um, is that uh, we've actually been, um, we, we've set up these systems whereby uh, you can download a small piece of software onto your computer at home. Uh, and using that software, you basically tunnel into um, our switcher uh, our television switcher, massive thing, um, uh, you're tunneling into it from home. And then you basically have access to that switcher from home. Um, and, and so the, the interface that you see on your screen 
pretty much exactly mimics the switcher that would be there in reality. Uh, and you learn how to use that switcher like you would if you were in the room. Um, and, and so it's great because again, uh, when you're, when we're all finally invited back to campus, uh, like it, it won't be the first time that you've used it. Uh, you haven't touched it maybe. Um, uh, but you will be like, oh, I recognize this thing. Cause it looks exactly like the thing that I was looking at, um, uh, using the software that I used. And we've done the same thing with the, um, uh, the audio um, consoles that we use in our television studios. Um, we've done the same thing with our graphics systems. All of these systems are all industry standard that we have on campus. And so it felt unfortunate to us uh, that our students wouldn't have access to this. So we literally just spent all summer ensuring that they still could. Um, and so uh, you, you're just able to access it now from home. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, um, not much has stopped. Uh, you're, you're still learning the same things that you would have. And to Finley's point before, um, the industry made this pivot, uh, but often the industry uh, is just following practices that have um, either existed or were on the cusp of about to be existing. Uh, and, and now uh, we're quite confident that many of these things are not going away. Um, uh, we've all become accustomed to uh, using Zoom now in order to kind of do presentations like this. Uh, you can watch talk shows and they're almost all being produced through Zoom. Uh, I can promise that this stuff is not gonna go away. Uh, and so we look at this again to Finley's point as, a, as an opportunity. Our students are gonna leave here understanding how to do this. Uh, and then when we're invited back, they'll be understanding how to do the traditional thing as well. Uh, so now you have the best of both worlds because this stuff is going to continue to be used moving forward. It's, uh, it's not a loss. It's actually, we're, we're, um, which may seem very strange, but we're actually looking at this as an opportunity to show you even more than what you would have seen otherwise. Amazing. That's such a great way of looking at it. And being adaptable, obviously, is such a huge skill in, in any industry, of course, media industry. So these times are a perfect crash course in, in how to be adaptable. For all of um, us. <laughs> for all of us. To the person who asked how many people are watching this stream right now, the answer is 3 million. We're very popular. Get your applications yes, in yes, now. Yes, that's correct. Um, so, uh, yeah, we have time for one more question. We are past four o'clock. So, the last question I want to ask is, do you need any prior experience with technology or any prior skills to do well uh, in these programs? Do it, Donna. No, you do not. And I'm perfect testimony to that. Having spent many, many years in the medical industry before I applied in 2002 to come to RTA. So what I brought is what I tell all of the students that are applying is passion. That's the common foothold that every student has in sport media, new media, or media production as they are all very passionate about what they want to do. If you have the ability to learn and the desire to learn, we are going to teach you. Anything that you're bringing with you is just, you know, food for the table, which is great that you can build upon, but you will learn alongside others who are skilled in areas. You may have skills that you're bringing to the table that they don't, but you will all learn together. Okay, great, thank you. So we're pretty much, we are past time now. So I just wanna ask, is there anything that you didn't get to say that you wanted to say uh, to the people who have come to the presentation today or any sort of parting words from any of our panelists? Said it all, amazing. We're, 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 we're available. So if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out. This doesn't have to be a one and done situation. Um, uh, uh, if you go to uh, ryerson.ca slash RTA, uh, look under the people tab. Uh, we're all there. Uh, our contact information is there. Uh, please don't hesitate, reach out if you have uh, particular questions because uh, um, uh, like Donna said, we want those passionate people. So if you're a passionate person, um, uh, we want to make sure you've got all the information that you need to make an informed decision uh, to realize that we're the best. Yeah. And the interview process is a great way for you to connect with us. It's not just asking you questions. It's, it's a connection that's made between your interviewer and you as a prospective student. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a great time to connect with, with someone on the faculty and, and, and get a better sense of the school. If there's still any outstanding questions um, at that point, right? This is, this is your future. It's really important. So make sure uh, we want to make, you know, get a good sense of who you are as individuals, but, but, you know, um, come with us and, and have questions uh, at that interview. Uh, stage further downstream. And I would also encourage students to do take a look at the RT 
CA website to take a look at the curriculum. It's important. Often in an application, if you've made reference to courses that you've seen in there that you are interested in and, and have a desire to learn down the road, that lets me know that you've done some research instead of coming in and thinking, what the heck am I going to be doing when I'm there? Give me a little bit of an idea that you know what we're all about. And why you want to be here. <laughs> Okay, amazing. That does that brings us to the end. So I want to say thank you so much to all of our panelists and presenters for such a great session. Um, we're now going to shut down our audio and video, meaning you won't be able to see or hear us, but we'll still be online to answer those last few questions that are still in the chat. Uh, feel free to yeah stick around to to record the answers to those questions. I encourage you to make note of any answers to your questions before the webinar ends, because those won't be part of the recording. The text answers that is. On behalf of Ryerson University, thank you once again for joining us today, and we hope to see you in other sessions this week, and we hope that uh, you and your loved ones are all healthy and safe. So thanks a lot, and take care, everyone.